Hello, this is Pastor Laura Cavendish, and I am coming to you from St. Paul Lutheran Church in Asheville, Ohio. I am recording this new devotional series for us during February, during my Lenten time, as part of my Lenten journey, and yet we aren't going to use it till probably um, into that Easter season. Um, the materials I'm using can be used at any season of the year. So if this isn't a good time for you to enter into this study, you can always come back and pick it up at another time that does work for you. It is a study based on the Lord's Prayer. And that is a prayer of our faith that is perennial and that we can use at any time. So we're just going to dive in. We are in our first day, um, as we did in our Advent journey way back when we always had weekly themes. And um, this week the theme is journey. And we begin with that beginning in the gospel of how um, we get introduced to the Lord's Prayer. So... We go to Luke 11 because that is where we hear the Lord's Prayer shared in that gospel. And Luke 11 verse 1 goes like this. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. So the question, Lord, teach us to pray, is definitely where we want to begin. And then the Lord's Prayer is also shared in Matthew 6, and we're going to hear how it gets introduced there. So Matthew 6, my pages are sticking. Matthew 6, verse 9. Jesus had been teaching about prayer and how to pray and um, how to um, not to practice our piety before others in order to be seen by them, but to have our reward from our Father in heaven. So it's that um, teaching about prayer in Matthew 6. And then Jesus goes on in verse 9 and says, Pray then in this way. Pray then in this way. So then he goes on in Matthew and gives an example of how we should pray. And that example will be the Lord's Prayer. So that's where we are beginning um, as far as scripture for, um, for our first day. And let me read the devotion. Jesus would often go off to some lonely place to pray sometimes alone, and sometimes with his disciples. Clearly, Jesus needed times away from the crowds who clamored for his attention, and he thought his disciples needed to get away from it all from time to time as well. Jesus and his disciples needed time when his attention could be completely on God, on his relationship with God, time to speak and time to listen. Time to rest in the love of the one who sent him into the world for love of the world. Clearly, Jesus needed the encouragement, the strengthening, the empowerment that comes from encounters with God in deep, intentional times of prayer. If he needed to pray, how much more do we? But not only do we need to pray, Many, if not most of us, want to pray. If we stop for a moment, step aside from the many distractions of our lives and look deep within, we find a longing to connect with God. We yearn for intimacy with the divine, the holy, the one whom Jesus called Father. And so we too ask, Lord, teach us to pray. And the request is answered. Jesus responds, pray then in this way. 
and then he teaches what we call the Lord's Prayer. Words repeated so often for so long that they have, may have lost their edge for us. Many of us have become numb to their meaning, insensitive to the radical nature of this ancient and yet modern prayer. Pray then in this way. These are not words of friendly advice from a gentle wisdom figure encouraging us to develop our own personal piety. Rather, they are words of command spoken to people who have been chosen to follow Jesus in God's mission and who have freely accepted that remarkable calling. We lose the full force and effect of this prayer if we do not hear the words, pray then in this way, as marching orders for people chosen for the mission of God, the mission of bringing justice and love, forgiveness and redemption into the world's sin and suffering and death. This particular offer that author then, and I need to tell you that Henry F. French has collected other um, things for us to meditate on once we hear that devotion. He wants us to think about this passage, Matthew 7, verse 7. Ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. That's Matthew 7, 7. And then here's a quote. The reality encompassed in the Lord's Prayer is not a pretty picture, but one of heavy conflict. The prayer that our Lord taught us cannot be prayed in just any way and with just any attitude. It presupposes a perception of this world's tragedy. And I'm going to go back and tell you who. That's from Leonardo Boff, The Lord's Prayer, A Prayer of Integral Liberation. So that's who that quote came from today. Now questions for you to think about. What place should the teaching of prayer have in a community of faith? What are some of the distractions that numb our longing for God and keep us from prayer? For those who understand that Lutheran understanding of law and gospel, um, here's a question. In what way might Jesus command pray then in this way be experienced as law, and then also think about how it would be experienced as gospel, as a freedom. And then finally, he gives us another scripture reading for medica meditation. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. And that is from Psalm 42, 1. Now, um, this particular author gives so much material. I'm going to need to um, be giving it to you in posts in the, um, on our group space. And he encourages that you do meditation or journaling in response to all of those if that is something you want to do to dive even deeper into this learning about the Lord's Prayer. Because he has some prompts for a journal reflection. Write about the place and practice of prayer in your life of faith right now as you begin this journey with the Lord's Prayer. In what, if any ways, does today's psalm fragment reflect your feeling? And that psalm fragment again was, As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. 
in your journal, then you can also write down any goals you have for this journey with the Lord's Prayer. So a whole lot of material for us besides listening. Um, I am doing this study with you and preparing it now for you during my Lenten journey. Um, as Lent is going on, I am doing another study with folks online, and that one is more of a teaching role. And um, I was longing to have a devotion that was feeding me as I was giving much away as worship leader and as um, Bible study leader and teacher. And um, I needed that space where I was going to be able to go to the stream and drink the water and my own thirst and hunger be satisfied. Um, just like it was written about today, um, we yearn for intimacy with the divine. Um, so, so that yearning has brought me to doing this, recording this now for you at a later time. So I hope that you will find that same benefit. Let's end this first day in prayer. Jesus, teach me to pray and grant me the faith and courage not only to pray, but to follow you in the ways of God. Amen. Tomorrow we continue with the journey, but we're going to start looking at how we begin. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. And if you are a person who has gotten used to that more modern, modern version, it's Our Father in Heaven, hallowed be your name. So we're going to be heading into that for a number of days now, for the rest of this first week. So, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Go in peace. May Christ go with you. And I can't find my remote to end this. <laughs> there we go. Um, blessings on your day.